Hey guys, and for one last time, welcome back to another episode of Di Kanayan. Unfortunately, yes, episode 7 na nga po yung last episode natin. Rounding off this last episode with me today is Jana. Hi guys! So because last episode na nga natin, we hope you guys can still stick around until the end for another Lika Kwentuhan where we'll be talking with some Pisay alumni for one last time. Nga pala, our topic for today is kind of related to some of the topics discussed in the past episode. So check the link in the description to begin catching up if you haven't seen those yet. So our topics so far have been pretty solidly just physics. But now, for a change, we'll be talking about Computer Algebra Systems, or CAS, which, as the name suggests, is rather closer to math or CS than it is to physics. Maraming iba't ibang klaseng CIS. So meron tayong specific na pag-uusapan na CIS for today. This is the one na aaralan nyo naman in grade 12 physics which is called Maxima. Maxima has been around kind of since the 1960s pa. Kasi it's the only remaining publicly available CIS na descendant ng Maxima which is one of the oldest computer algebra systems developed. Pero it's still being maintained to this day kasi it still gets some software updates. And yung latest nga is no 2020. So Maxima is a software that allows you to do many math-related things. Kasi nga, algebra system siya. Hindi lang naman algebra yung ginagawa niya though, kasi kaya rin niyang mag-solve ng mga calculus equations, mag-plot ng graphs, and many more. Okay, so let's talk naman about the basic functions of Maxima. So if you guys know C++, it's kind of similar actually. Una sa lahat, Maxima has different cells na pwede mong lagyan ng text. These are pretty much just kinds of inputs. Meron tayong heading cell, text cell, and input cell. Yung heading cell, it does pretty much what you think it would. It's large and bold text, tapos meron siyang box beside it na pag pinlik mo, magkakolapse yung mga nakalagay under. Next, the text cell just lets you type anything and it doesn't treat it as a legit input, as in text lang talaga siya. So mostly, pang comment siya, so you know what's going on in your code. And last but not least, yung input cell, yung mismong paglalagyan mo ng code. So pag may nilagay ka na command doon, and then you press control enter, it's going to give you an output. So, moving on. Dahil nga algebra system siya, let's talk naman about the algebraic functions. So you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide using the keys plus, minus, asterisk, and slash respectively. You can also put exponents using the key na ganun. And pwede kang mag-group using parentheses. And pretty much you can do anything a calculator can. Basic lang ang syntax nito. Lagyan mo lang yung expression mo, say 1 plus 1. Tapos lagyan mo ng semicolon pag tapos ka na. And boom! It gives you the output for whatever you type, which is 2 in this case. Of course, aside from arithmetic, kailangan mo rin mag-declare ng variables. So you have somewhere to store your outputs. This is easily done with a colon. So if you're gonna make it x colon 1 plus 1 semicolon, the number 2 will be saved inside x. Any equation from this point where you use x, gagamitin nyo na yung 2 instead. So if I do x times 2, it will give me 4. Makaka-declare ka rin ng functions, pero you have to use the colon equals. For example, if I want to declare the position kinematic equation, I have to write x as a function of t, colon equals 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. Dahil t yung variable natin, after I declare this, I can just write x of 1. And it will solve the equation for t equals 1, which is 4.9. Moving on, we also have trig in maxima. So unlike usual calculators naman na you can set yung angle unit to degrees or radians, this one just uses radians. So an important part of trig is pi. And to declare pi in maxima, you have to write it as percent pi. Percent pi? Para pwede mo siyang gamitin to calculate. So for example, to find the sine of pi, you would write sine, open parentheses, percent pi, close parentheses, semicolon. While to find the sine of 30 degrees, you would write Sine, open parentheses, 30 times percent pi over 180, close parentheses. Percent pi over 180 converts the degrees into radians. Last but not the least, sa mga basic functions, you can also plot graphs. Pwede mong i-customize pretty much everything about the graph. Pwede mong palitan yung label ng x and y axis. Pwede mong lagyan ng legend. Pwede mong i-adjust kung hanggang saan nag extend yung axis mo. You can also put in pretty much as many equations as you'd like. Maxima has a lot more useful functions out there than these that we've discussed today. Kaya niya mag-differentiate, integrate, kaya niya mag-derive ng equation, and so much more. Pero, for now, let's move on na, and let's actually talk about what Maxima is for. A CIS like this can be useful in many situations, should you choose to use it. 
pwede kang mag-solve ng mga physics problems, pwede mo rin tong gamitin for some kind of simulation-based research kasi nga it can execute a lot of commands rather quickly and it can speed up your calculations kung marami kang instances or kailangan i-compute. But for the application ng CAS that I feel like pinaka-ma-appreciate nyo, it's the online calculator talaga. So if you've ever used Wolfram Alpha before or something like that, you're gonna understand talaga the value of online calculators. Especially when you're in grade 11 or grade 12 and you're dealing or having a hard time with calculus, sites like derivativecalculator.com and integralcalculator.com will be your best friend because I know it is mine. It definitely is. <laughs> this, that's not part of the script. That's, I would be dead. I would be dead. Oh my god. Anyway, yun lang naman for the last episode of Lika Nayan. Before we call it quits for real na, punta muna tayo sa last session natin. Ang lika kwentuhan. Hi guys and welcome back to another lika kwentuhan session. And I'm like your office-sized batch 2019 graduates who is currently studying at UP Diliman. Hi to you, Brian. Hi. <laughs> so first of all, please introduce yourself and explain your course and what you do there. Uh, I'm a second year industrial engineering student. Industrial engineering is kind of the engineering to understand processes usually made in businesses and manufacturing to make it more efficient or to essentially study how well something is running and to try to improve it to the best of its capabilities. Okay, so why did you choose this major and do you have any plans for a future career in this field? Actually, my first choice in college was architecture and then second was civil, and then third was industrial engineering. So I kind of like everything, man. So before I really like houses, I also like really wanted to go into business growing up. So because parang business is really essentially tied to making things more efficient. Parang when you have like a product and then you have an end product, in order to enhance its value, you need a process. So parang that process is parang very closely tied to industrial engineering. So yeah, parang my interest in business is kind of what really like pushed me to put industrial engineering as my parang third choice. But essentially now I kind of think it's my first choice. Uh, for the future, maybe working in a company or starting my own business. Yeah, that's something I would like to do. <laughs> what kind of business? Meron ka ba anything in mind? I kind of like designing things. So I might like set up my own like maybe design studio, which is which is kind of weird because it's not like business oriented. But I think you could apply like some efficient practices to maybe a design studio, but also maybe any kind of business maybe in like manufacturing or even the big companies like startups they use a lot of like industry engineering practices to make things like run smoothly and run efficiently so in studying industrial engineering what skills do you think you have developed that will help you reach that goal i think in the first year in the first year of studying we didn't really have much majors but in the second year we kind of like starting to get really into industrial engineering i think really the biggest skills that i could name is really just the way we think we kind of think big picture we want to look at how everything works together how everything affects each other so around one thing won't really change everything one thing is like affected by many things so you kind of have to see it in a big picture and also comparing comparing a lot is also very important so comparing works with stat we actually use a lot of stat we have stat subjects that have parang relations to engineering so parang statistics help us to parang make meaning out of numbers if that makes sense i mean yeah yeah that's not man so when you say stat were you able to apply anything you learned in uh, high school like a- along with physics and math and everything did yeah, any we, had of a stat, we had a stat subject in high school and i remember like still being able to recall certain formulas and like chi squared test the one taught by sir mark some of the things he still kind of recall but they help you guide the man like even if you don't remember any of those in the back of your head just having the experience of working with those topics helps you to like understand it better so today's topic nga pala is computer algebra systems how could you relate that to the course you're taking now? the closest thing i could relate it to is excel uh excel essentially is able to help you create numbers and allows you to make formulas out of like rows and stuff that makes it really fast parang you can just make variables then you have an end result so parang and i know this quote i don't know if it's a real quote the weakest 
biggest part of your equation is the constant. When you have like an Excel file, if everything's a variable, like you can like change it anytime and you'll have an end result. But if you have like a constant, you're gonna have to like keep fixing it. We're starting pa lang now uh, to use Excel like more, but our profs really like stress the importance of being uh, adept in using Excel. Because right, you need to calculate something in the calculator, like it's really slow. But when you can like highlight an entire row and then just like get the end result right away, like it saves so much time and it's like crazy that a computer can do that. That's true. In college, mo lang ba like na realize yung importance ng no? like Excel and computer algebra systems? Or was it also taught in high school? I don't really super remember using Excel in high school too much. But I think for our stat project, we had to use Excel, but that was so long ago, so I don't super remember. And I remember a lot of reports that I remember using Excel on, like even the graphs, even in physics, like the lab reports, you have to use Excel in those when you want to plot uh, line graphs or bar graphs to see if it makes a trend or not. What do you remember from like SYP physics? SYP Physics had a lot of coding. Are you guys doing coding now? Yeah, we are. Yes. Co- that, that was really fun. But that, the coding of this is mostly like equations, right? It's really understanding how to translate the problems into equations. Yeah. We had that coding subject also, but it got cut short because of COVID. But I think in the 21st century, coding is one of like a life skill that you need. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that physics specifically was taught better in high school or in college? Like, is it okay if like we don't fully understand physics yet and then we'll just try to catch up when we're in college now? In college, they're kind of strict with the way they teach. I think in high school, I really appreciated that we had like different applications. We had coding. In college, kasi it's like they run through all the topics you learned in high school like really fast in like maybe one sem. And then they have a multiple choice exam at the end, the finals. So it, it was really just like study and then take an exam but i remember in physics uh pisai i remember we had like days where like oh how do i solve this like guys how do i code this so it really tested me in like a, di- in a different way that i really appreciated i think they're a bit different but a lot of it really helped like even like going through the topics a bit really helped in college you have an advantage taking physics in pisai yun nga din yung na mention ng mga previous namin na interview like in the first sem daw it was like literally all the physics things we discussed in high school kasi isang sem lang siya (laughs) yeah but it's easy it's good naman kasi the grading in college for physics it's very lenient and it's multiple choice so at least you don't have and because I remember you have to it's just problems yeah Yeah. you have maybe six problems so you really can't get away if you don't know anything (laughs) but (laughs) you can kind of guess a bit in college if you don't know (laughs) <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> so, what's college like? What are the people there like? What's the environment like? Like now and in COVID. First, I want to describe college as not COVID because oh, yeah. that's the <laughs> that's the way I want to remember. COVID college. doesn't count. <laughs> Valid. Uh, in college, there's a lot of org stuff. Like you can really choose like the org you want to spend time in, and you're free to like choose who you want to hang out in college. Like it's really so big compared to high school. It's really there for you to open yourself out and just to explore different things. Like if you want to go in this org, the orgs also in college they're different from the clubs in Pisay. The clubs in Pisay they don't really host that many events, so it's really just kind of small get-togethers or small activities. But the orgs in college they're like they're big. Like, they have like big projects so they really have like their flagship projects the UP Fair is like a big project of like ECOSOC so you're gonna be able to work there if you go to like, ECOSOC or GMA then the org I'm in now UPI club we have workshops uh, we have an ergonomics convention then we also have like tutorials for the upcoming UP students before like it was hard to like reach out to the people outside to have like activities outside that really reach out to people but in college the flagship projects really like you're gonna be working with the public or like a really big group of FIFA. Wait, I'm curious because I see UPIE club like all the time. So how, <laughs> how does it, like it's IE and you IE. So parang hindi ko ba na umay na parang IE na yung course ko tapos mag IE club pa ako. Is it like the same or how does it relate to each other? Mm, there's a kind of culture in college where you want to join your home org. So the electrical engineering students, they have their home org. IE students have our home org. You're not really restricted to how many orgs you can join. So people generally join their home org because that's where a lot of their course mates are. And then they have a lot of activities that support you in your course mismo. So in IE club, we have like tutorials for the subjects we're taking, which really help out. And we have like drive of sample exams that we can kind of study if we want to. 
So, it's an parang ad- small advantage or they try to uplift you as much as they can. I see. Okay. okay. In grade 10, did you already know that you were gonna take up physics? Like, as your core? Mm, in grade 10, I actually took physics as a core, then bio as a elective. Uh, ah, 11. Grade 11, I took physics a core, then bio was an elective. I think I was kind of leaning to... <laughs> I really don't like chem, so chem was not <laughs> even an option. Uh. <laughs> I had a small interest in bio, and I like physics in general, but I think physics for me was the closest science I could kind of really see myself doing. So I really, I think I knew na talaga in grade 10, but I know some people are not as sure. Yeah. So, yeah. before choosing your SYP course or your college course, is there something you wish you already knew? Na parang you know now, pero you didn't know back then. There's not really a lot of uh, cons to choosing what you like. So, just choose what you want to do. You're all going to have to take a core anyway. So, it's not really like you have a lot of options. I mean, you have three and they're <laughs> all very different. <laughs> So I think you just have to think about like, oh, what 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 don't I mind studying and what what interests me? And you can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, just choose whatever you want. In college, I don't think it would matter a lot because in college, you'd be learning everything again and all the materials will be given to you naman again. I have a course mate, Jamie. He took BioCore. So parang diba, IE don't have bio at all. So why did you take bio? <laughs> I guess in physics, I had a small advantage because I, I went through the topics a little bit. But in general, he was able to catch up the man, like, no problem. It's just a small advantage, but with enough, like, hard work and materials naman in college are taught generally well. Some are, some are taught really well, some are not taught that well, but they taught generally well. <laughs> <laughs> so you can catch up, no problem, whatever parang core you take. Don't worry about it too much. <laughs> Okay, so actually, that's it for our last episode for Lika Nayan. Thank you so much again, Kuya Brian, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you also to everyone who watched all of our videos. And if you haven't, click the link down below. We hope you enjoyed our series. And thank you so much. Bye! 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 Bye.